Something's going on with the vibe. Ever think about like your past and what makes you be a certain way? I am a bad liar. Bruh. Crack the cookie. Gotta crack the nut. Yeah. Bottom. Bottoms up. By the way, there's no drugs in there. <laughs> I have to break it to you. I lied. Welcome to- oh, it's your chair. Jesus Christ. Oh, I thought something was weird. Take this. No, you- get up. Switch. Should we take our sunglasses off? Yeah, that's the polite thing to do. Welcome. To the podcast. The first official episode of- Podcast. Podcast. A right. podcast. So this is our fifth take because I keep forgetting to either record- or whatever. We have been having an unfortunate technology day. Horrible day. And it's day. not even our fault. Stuff was freaking out. Something's going on with the vibe. Um, We were talking about just like porn earlier. And like, fuck. No, we weren't. We gotta go. <laughs> no, we weren't. <laughs> we Christian's go. straight up lying. We gotta go back and tell the whole story about <laughs> porn. No, we don't have to recount the story about porn. That never happened. Oh, okay. Guys. I have to break it to you. I lied. Are you a good liar? Me? Yeah. I am an actor. So some might say I am a good liar, but I'll have you know, I am a bad liar. Bruh. I think I'm a good actor. Bro, I think I'm a bad liar. I think I'm a bad You just had a. <laughs> I've just. You ever had a dream that you. That. That. <laughs> I just wanted to weave a confusing tale. So when you listen back, you're like. I just want to let you guys know. I can't tell if she's a good liar or not. <laughs> that I am an actor. So I am a good actor. But I do want to tell you that I am, in fact, a bad liar. <laughs> you ever think about, like, your past and what makes you be a certain way? I try not to. Like, I like revisiting things. That was a joke. I like revisiting things sometimes because it's cool. It's like you, you can look back at stuff. <laughs> sometimes it's cool. Sometimes to, it's cool to revisit trauma. You know how you have a memory and you bury it so, so deep. And then one day during quarantine, because you have nothing but you time. Just remember. You have nothing but time to be in your own head with nothing but your own thoughts. And then suddenly you wake up and you go... <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God, I peed my pants in second grade. And that's why I'm an ENFP. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, for sure. So it's very interesting to do some like deep analytical work with your yeah. own psyche and be like, oh shit, because that's this, why. yeah. And, yeah. and then you, this is therapy folks. When you oh. find the root and you're just like, that's why. It's like cracking the, the nut open. Cracking the, the nut. <laughs> You is just, that not safe? You just gotta crack the nut. Wait, crack the case? Crack the case? Crack the nut? Crack the cookie? You gotta crack the nut. Come on. You just gotta... You know what I mean. Sometimes, doctor, you just gotta, gotta crack, crack the, the nut. nut. No, but, um, so this goes back to, um, the biggest realization. I would always think back, because I feel like I'm a pretty weird person. I do okay. a lot of weird things. I get away with a lot of things in life. And I always think, why is that? Like, has something happened in my childhood that, like, made me think this way or whatever? Mm. Or, like, I just always think, like, I always want to revisit shit and figure things out. But I could never find anything that would be reasonable enough to be, like, that's why. You know? Because a lot of people have, like, traumatic experiences as a kid. Like, whether it be, like, being molested as a kid or being, like, intense bullying or abuse. Well, that's, I mean, that is true trauma. Yeah, you know, that is like I always try to, like, think... And try to was there some major yeah event? was there something because like with trauma you don't realize it was trauma until later in life and you're like and, oh and also I mean it's true our brains do a really good job of protecting ourselves from ourselves yeah yeah so like that's why people have repressed memories yeah exactly I I repress my memories a lot too like for, for out of fear of like pain no it's or, just like my brain tends to like when I think back at moments where I know it was gritty like when I first moved here when mm -hmm. I had like five roommates and it was just like a hard time making money. And all that. I know it was a hard time and I had struggles, but I don't remember those. I only remember the good times. You know, I feel the same way when I moved to the city. Yeah. Um, I was in college and I had a teeny tiny junior one bedroom apartment. I had a bunk bed with my roommate. Junior one bedroom. Junior one bedroom, aka there's a hallway between yeah, the main studio. area and the bathroom. But um, looking back, I was like, like now looking back, you know, whatever, how many years out. I'm like, I was depressed. Oh, yeah. Like, I was severely depressed. But in the moment, it was kind of just like, I'm tough. You know, I'll get through this. Everybody's going, this is hard. Like, I just moved yeah. to a new place. You know, I'm busy and I'm in school right now. But 
I think it's also as you get older, you know, every year, mm -hmm. well, every year you get older, you have a birthday. What? And I feel like- No. But I feel like every time you look back and you're like, oh, now I get it. Yeah. And then you turn another year older and you're like, mm, now uh, I get oh, it. And then, but then there comes a point where you're like, I don't ever. No, you would, yeah, like you're like, I've never gotten it and I'll yeah, never get it. I will never. But yeah, but go on. So like with specific events, yeah, thinking yeah, about like it. Yeah, like I always think back at big moments and I'm like, I don't remember the time where I was like, how am I going to pay rent? Yeah. I always remember the time like, oh yeah, I remember when we, when I put a used condom in my roommate's trash can oh. just because why not? <laughs> why did you do that? But anyway, so the main thing I wanted to get into with, um, personality types and trauma is because I revisited a trauma that I never thought was trauma. Like you ever like think back at things and be like, oh yeah, I had one of those. Finally, after fucking years of wanting to do that on accident, I was talking to our friend Dory. You guys know Dory. Dory, no! <laughs> pass me a chip too. We can't eat at the chip. Now pass me the rock. You're going to rip the bag. All Are right. you mad? All right, so... You no. Got, you guys know Dory. Okay, go back and say Dory now. So Dory, no! I love that bit. All right, so um, talking to Dory about my childhood trauma. And then we were just like talking about like toxic, just toxic people in mm -hmm. our lives. But um, I never really had anything toxic or necessarily mentally affect me until we got to this part of the story where I was like, well, I had a girlfriend whom I'm also omitting the name. What name or what's the um, sound? <laughs> what name? <laughs> what name? Uh, what what sound? Oh, it should be um, uh, it should be a Caroline Polachek run. Just a quick one. A what? A Caroline Polachek run. Like one of her quick little like a run, a vocal run. For the name? <laughs> That's so much work. Okay. <laughs> Give me a sound effect, okay. Sydney. What the? F yeah, I want her name to be a proverb. A gun. A gun. <laughs> okay. Shooting. <laughs> it's just like a. Okay, for the sake of just like, just in case, I'm gonna use a fake name, but also whenever I use the name. <laughs> so let's just call her May. May. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for her, for May, I, I dated May in like 2017. This was my first girlfriend, and then like. Um, since I was like also an experienced, she was also an experienced when we, um, we just fell out of love and I was like, you know what? We should break up before things go bad. I remember having a talk with her. She was like, we're in her dorm and we're having a talk about like how we're going to break up. And she was just like, what? Why? I'm like, I just don't love you the same, you know, just mm -hmm. how breakups go. And then we got to a point where it was like. She was just like super sad about it. But then randomly she started fucking falling. Like I'm in her dorm. She's, she's on the ground, like fucking screaming like, no, no, why? Oh God. Why? And I'm like fucking in 18, 19 at the time. So I'm like, this is breakups, right? This is how it goes. This is just how it goes, right? Like you hear about crazy acts. I'm like, oh, I guess they're all, this is how it is. So I'm sitting there like, yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fucking, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay. And then just after five minutes of that, she goes, she stands up, takes a breath, <sighs> looks at me. I'm like, and she goes, you know what? This is mature of us to do this before things go bad. You know what? This is, this is very mature of us. It's very... This is a, how grown up of us is this that we're able to identify a problem and solve it before it becomes bigger. This is so nice. We should celebrate. We should celebrate this. Whoa. We wait, should celebrate your breakup? We should celebrate that we're so grown up. Let's dance. She puts on music. Let's dance. Come on, let's dance. This is so cool. I'm like, oh boy. Yes. There's a lot going on. I'm like, yes. <laughs> self soothing, self soothing. Like, yep, this is breakups. Like, let's go. Let's dance in the hallway. I'm like, dance in the hallway. I'm like, there's nothing to celebrate here. She's just like, let's go. It's a celebration. We're so fucking mature. And then like, as she's about to go outside, she like takes a break by the door and goes, yeah, you know what? You're right. There's like not much to celebrate. I'm like, yeah, you know, nothing to celebrate. She comes back to me, sits down on her bed and just like, I remember this. She looks up and goes, 
what the fuck? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, oh my God. She starts fucking crying again. Oh, no. Just bawling, like extreme, like on the floor, like, ah, ah, just fucking the most intense crying you've ever seen. Jeez. And she's just like super like dragging her face on the wall, on the floor crying. Five minutes later, gets back up. Time to dance. You know what? This is actually a good idea. Oh, boy. And after that point, I'm like, fucking something's going on. Oh, no. I'm like, maybe this is not how it is. Maybe. I was like, I called a roommate and mm. I'm like, yo, you got to come home because May is... <laughs> May is just like freaking out. And then she gets home. But after like four and five back and forth episodes. So I'm like, what do we do? And she's like witnessing one go. So then I remember calling her mom. Oh boy. And Cause she lives in New York, but her mm -hmm. mom lives in Hawaii. Her parents live in Hawaii. So then I called her mom and I'm like, hey, May is just like wild. Just like insane and then was like well what do i do and she's like okay i'll try and catch the ne the next flight there so then post breaking up she's just flipping out and screaming at me yelling at me for ruining her life but then five minutes later let's fucking celebrate this oh, and i'm like life's boy. not that bad or i'm sorry i didn't mean to do that and i'm like she would flip back and forth like a light switch i would just be there to see this going on and then i remember the craziest thing was a side effect of bipolar disorder is like you'll have altered depictions of reality. Like you'll think that the ultimate reality is not what you think it is. And there's just some fucking crazy shit going on that we don't know about. Mm, like so like her, paranoia type. Yeah. Like an example of a doctor that did a study on this is she, every time she had a manic episode, she would think that the snakes and the penguins were trying to kill her. What? Like all of them. In the world. She would think that all the snakes and the penguins were trying to kill her. Interesting. Yeah. So then with hers, because she wanted to be an actor, her fucking ultimate altered reality was that Disney, the company, set up a fucking scheme and that every person in her life was an actor. Her parents were actors. Oh, no. So her, it was like the Truman Show. Yeah. She thought she was part of the Truman Show and that the goal was that Disney was testing her to see if she was capable of handing, handling this life to see if she could be a, a child star. And um, so then one thing she did was she like convinced us to bring her to... Or she, she was like fucking having a manic episode and she was like, we have to go to New Jersey. We have to. I have this fucking audition there for this fucking campaign that I that's gonna make me a star. Like, and I've been planning it for months. You have to take me there. And at this point, me and her roommate are still like, what the fuck? What do we do? Obviously, you gotta take her to New Jersey. No, no, I'm like, <laughs> she's so She has a campaign there, she told you. <laughs> she will be a star. She's so convinced. Wait, that did it not exist? No, no, it was real. Okay. But like, I'll get into that. So she she was so convinced that this whole Disney scheme was a thing that even me and her roommate were like, are you an actor? Are you an actor? You know, like I was, almost, she I was almost convinced that it was real. Boy, she was so deep she in it. She was so deep that she was screaming at my face. Cause it's like, it's someone I've dated for a long time. Yeah, like, you loved not her, long you time. know? Yeah, like seven months. It's not like that long, but that's long enough to feel like you know someone. Yeah. You know? And she never had had episodes before. No. Or not no, like that, at least. Never had an episode. Wow. Just the most normal person. But she uh, was just so convinced. And since I've known her for who she is, and she's just telling me with, this, with her whole chest, I'm like, okay, well, this has to be something I can look right, into. Right, you believe it, and I mm -hmm. believe you. Now, like, imagine if your mom randomly called you and be like, your dad was an actor this whole time. I would be like... What? Yeah, you He's know, a good actor. You have no reason. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, my dad. My dad's a. He's, is he famous? Really? <laughs> can he get? What me is a, he in? Can he get me a gig? What is he in? What is he? What's he been no, in? But it's like the first thing you think is there's no reason to lie. Right, right, right. You know. Right. So then I'd be like, all right, so let's go to New Jersey. So I fucking me and her roommate took the train to Hoboken, I think. Nice. All the way to fucking go to this audition. We get there. It's at like some fucking random hotel, like. Um, like a courtyard Marriott, but it's like the banquet room. Sketchy. Just like fucking super sketchy. 
And then we get in. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of moms and kids. That's the main. Oh, attraction. it was a big, big casting call. It no, was no, a- no, 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 no. It was a bunch of moms and kids. They get up on stage, and the main speaker. You know, you ever watch Sweet Life of Zach and Cody? Yeah. You know Esteban. Yes. That guy was the main speaker at this place, and it was followed by like five other D-list actors. What was this? Just I'll get into it. So then we get there, and this fucking Esteban guy is talking about like. You have to, so this is, he explains the whole program where it's like, you get involved with people that are in the industry. They tell you how to do it. They tell you what to do. They connect you with the right people. And then at the end he goes, so it's just a cheap $4,000 package. It's a pyramid scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. There's a lot of that. As soon as I realized he's trying to sell us something like, oh my fucking God, this is a scheme. But she's so manic and convinced. And this whole time she's crying. She's like, oh my God, my dreams are about to come true. She's fucking crying. Oh my gosh. The whole time she's just like bawling her eyes out. This is like hurting my heart. It's insane. And then like at the same time of her crying, she'll have moments in the fucking, in the speech or the, the session where she's like, oh my God, wait, I know that guy. She'll stand up and say shit. And then the speaker will be like, hi, you know him, right? Hi. You know, like he's like uncomfortable. Weird. Like, oh, okay. And then um, I remember we, uh, so the CEO of this thing, it's not Esteban, it's this random old guy. He's like talking at the end. He's like, if you have any questions, we'll be at the fucking table. And yeah, so then I'm like, uh, as soon as I tell her roommate, I'm like, dude, this is you know what's going on, right? She's like, yeah, it's a fucking scheme. I'm like, yeah, so we should leave. So we tell um, May, (laughs) so we tell May like, hey, we gotta go. This is not right. She's like, you guys are fucking ruining my life. You're killing my dreams. You're actors. You're just a test. And at some point, I'm a kid, you know? So this is the first time I've ever gone through something like this. So at some point I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, go. Go and see what happens. So we go and meet the CEO guy and he meets up. Like as soon as we get there, May starts just bawling. Oh God. At his feet. She's just crying in the lobby. And he's like, he, the guy's looking around like, is this, what's going on? <laughs> is this normal? He looks yeah. at you he goes, breakup. Yeah. No, and I <laughs> Recent like, breakup. I was like, she's just excited. You know, oh, I'm, I'm over it at this God. point too. I'm like, she's just excited. And it's awkward. That's very, very, it's, it's so what a weird, uncomfortable dude. place to be put There's in. There's all these moms and kids looking at this grown woman crying. crying. So then she's just bawling and she gets up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just so excited that my life's finally gonna, I'm finally gonna get to follow my dreams. And then I'm like, oh man, I gotta fucking. It's and, brutal. And the first thing that this motherfucker says to her is, so have you figured out what package you're buying? Of course. And she's like, oh my God, well, I have to review it and I have to figure out, but thank you so much for the opportunity. He's like, yeah, just, well, let me know. Sign the dotted line. Yeah, he's like, let me know if you ever figure out the package. Here's my card. He gave her his his card. And like, we get back to the apartment. She just grabs the number and calls the guy and she's crying on the phone. She's, Immediately? Yeah, but I'm like, give me the phone, please. And she's like, no, you're going to fucking ruin my dreams. She's crying. And then he's, and I, I remember getting on the phone with him. I grabbed the phone from her and she's just crying in the corner. She's like, Christian's fucking ruining my dreams. You're fucking taking this away from me. I worked so hard for this. I'm on the phone with him and he's like, she okay? I'm like, yeah, she's just like not going to do this. And then I hung up and then... But then, like, after that, her uh, her mom got in, like, the next day. Oh, and, thank goodness. And I still, like, had to... I didn't have to, but I was like, I should stay and make sure that everything's okay. So I kind of helped out around. Just like... And another part of uh, bipolar disorder is hypersexuality. Yeah, yeah. So then, while we're watching TV, she'll just randomly stand and be like, Christian, let's go have sex in front of her whole family. Oh, no. Her whole family's there, and they're all just, like, looking at me. I'm like... You're like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go. And then I'm looking at her mom and her mom's like, and then she looks at her mom and her, and she goes, you have to stop fucking treating me like I'm a kid. I will have sex with my boyfriend when I want. And then I'm like, so then I like, I remember I brought her to the room. Like, and I, we broke up. Yeah, I brought her to the room and I tucked her in. I'm like, I'll be back. And I never went back. And then I heard her crying oh, in the room. Oh my God. Yeah. And then now. Christian, this is. Traumatizing, Dude, I was like- You were what, 17, 18? I was like 18, yeah. Extremely traumatizing. I had to like, and after that, and also while we're there in her place, she's FaceTiming these guys. Yeah. That, the yeah, whole time that because she's trying that to like tracks. get them to come over. And, and I'm like, 
fresh out of breakup, having to see that. And not only, I, I know that hypersexuality actually is like a lot in a lot of cases with trauma as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like 100%. a way that people cope. Yeah. So it makes sense that she had this breakup trauma and then immediately uh-huh. was like, oh, like text these guys. I'll like, mm-hmm. you know, bounce back. It's yeah. like rebounding, but in like a very dangerous oh, way. Oh yeah. No, it's like, uh, she was definitely like using that as a re- means to cope with yeah. the stuff. And also she, uh, with a bipolar disorder, you don't know you have it until- No, and you don't know that- No like, one ever knows. The doctors can't diagnose you until something happens that triggers it and then you have it for life. Like that's just how your brain is. So she lived a very comfortable life, private school, parents paid for everything. So me breaking up with her was like the first- Hardship? Stressful thing to ever happen, I'm assuming. You didn't ruin her life. You weren't like, I'm going to hurt oh, her. Oh yeah, no. You were just like, I'm going to break up because I'm not happy. Yeah. And then it just so happened to God, the like worst triggered thing. a horrible event. Oh yeah, no. That Have was, you kept in touch with her? No, because I was just like, I got to move on from that. That fucked me up. I'm you know so, what I mean? I'm, I completely understand why you would not carry that memory with you too. And why it came I didn't up remember. suddenly. Yeah. I don't remember that. I only remember like, yeah, I dated her for seven months and it was like some great times, you know, like having a girlfriend in New York. Man. That was like when I moved here, mm-hmm. she would show me around and stuff. That's where like, I know all these food spots because of her. And like, that's like what got me here. So I'm like forever thankful for meeting her and dating her. But it's like that going back to how that's affecting me now, that has made me so hyper conscious of mental health Yeah. all the time. Because it's like, you never really know what's going on. Cause I dated her for seven months, but you would never expect, you never know. No. So that's what kind of gets me to and, always think. And I think that. people, people, when you're in a relationship, People always assume like, because you're in a healthy relationship that like, you must be happy yeah, and things must be good. Mm -hmm. And that is like, so not the case. One, just because you're in a healthy, happy relationship Mm -hmm. does not mean things are always good. Yeah, Like things can be very bad. Yeah, And also like people who are in relationships can still be depressed. Oh, hundred percent. You know, they can still have their own shit that they're going through. And no matter what you do as like a partner in their life and how much you support them and like love them, It doesn't fix mm-hmm. what they're going through. Yeah. And it sucks because it's like, yeah, you could be with this person and still not fully understand exactly. It's how crazy. they're going through the world. It's crazy. That's why it's like now, that's one thing that I realized, oh, that's a huge part of who I am today. Yeah. But I never realized it because I never revisited it because I was always like, oh, I had a crazy ex story. Everyone has a crazy ex story, but I never revisit the fact that maybe that one's a bit. Like maybe that's not Insane. normal. It's not only yeah. crazy, but it's like a lot. Yeah. Dang. It's it's also like, it's funny that you're like, yeah, I'm now more empathetic, you know, living in New York City because I think the joke is people who live in New York are so cold. Yeah. And we're like, move out of New York City before you get hard, uh-huh. um, before you're hardened. And not true. Because I think after living in the city too, I was way more like aware right. of how I'm feeling yeah. of like my friends and, and being like- It's because you know everyone's also struggling. Honestly, I think that's it. You I think New I mean? York City does something. Like one time I was on the subway and it was a little bit busy and there was a girl sitting a, like a few uh, seats away from me. And I look over and she's like crying. Mm-hmm. And I just had like that New Yorker thing where right. everybody ignores each other. You can cry on the subway. Nobody's gonna bother or you. You can like piss on the subway. Nobody's gonna bother you. You can, Nobody. that's a little New York secret. You can piss on the subway and nobody's gonna <laughs> say anything. But anyway, I felt so bad and I wanted so badly to reach out. Cause I'm like, I fucking get it, dude. Like right. I have cried on the subway. Like right. I understand no matter what you're going through, probably not the same shit, but like, I get it. All this I had- This is actually my ex. Oh, the timeline. <laughs> I had, all I had in my bag was three Malamars. You know Malamars? Yeah. Cookies like during yeah, yeah, fall time fucking... in, a, in a baggie. And I was getting off the train and I literally just went over and I gave, you so sketchy. One? I gave her the bag and I just went, I hope you feel better. And I was like, these are cookies. And then I was like- By the way, these are cookies. You turn around. She, by the way, there's no drugs in there. Yeah, I should have been like, these are cookies. They're not poisoned, by the way. <laughs> I don't think she ate them. Maybe she did. Oh. But the, oh God. Oh, dear Lord. Oh. But the way she looked at me, it was the yeah. most like empathetic connection. And right. it, she just looked at me and gave me the like, like, thank, thank you. You, you know like a, what I'm going yeah, through. Yeah, an unspoken like, Yeah. thank you. The unspoken, especially when like a fight breaks out in, on the subway, everyone uh, has the unspoken like, there's a fight happening. Yeah, and everyone just like. But before we get into a fight, thank you for coming on 
Thank you for listening to my trauma. Why I oughta. Dude, I will listen to your trauma anytime. What One, what are friends for? And two, it takes a lot to uncover that shit. It really and does. you got to talk about it. It was like, I've never really talked about it outside of the, yeah, I had a crazy ex and it doesn't get past that. Or yeah. like, I had a crazy ex, she was bipolar. Yeah, and it's people really- are just like, okay. Yeah, like I'm forever grateful for that happening because I definitely wouldn't be who I am now. But like revisiting it, as who I am now with full intent of figuring digging, out. Digging, digging, yeah. yeah. I'm like, crazy. So yeah. If leave in the comments your traumatizing story. If you have a crazy ex story or you were traumatized as a leave child. Leave in the comments. Go ahead and tell the world tell the below. Tell story. And I'm sure it's, that people will be kind. I'm sure everyone on the internet's nice. Uh, they are. Yeah, everyone's nice. Yeah, they did a, an All experiment. All right, so uh, leave nice comments on Sydney's Instagram. What's your Instagram? My Instagram is Sydney Gale, and I'm on Twitter at Soccer Mom Sid. Please be nice to me online. What's yours? <laughs> I'm at Christian VY and Twitter at JK underscore Wiling. You can be mean if you want. No, give me your trauma. Give me your trauma. Give me your trauma. I want to take on your trauma. Right, I don't have. Up. Let's say these names real quick. Okay. May. May. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching our first episode. Uh, Thank you for, yeah, this was the first episode. We hope for many, many more and a bright future and no more trauma. What do newscasters say? Thank you and good night. We need to come up with one. We need a quick ending. Okay, we need a good ending. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, brainstorm, brainstorm, go. Um. Catch, catch on the flip side. <laughs> What's something with ass? Yeah. Um... um. We'll see you. Oh man, this is hard. Bo- bottom, bottom, bottoms up. That's a and drink. the devil laughs. Bottoms up, and the devil laughs. You know where that's from, right? No, what is that from? Oh, I'll show you. Thank you for watching. Even if the M was not the issue, you cannot deny that that is a cross. And what is witchcraft when the cross goes upside down? bottoms up and the devil laughs.